As a child in a Christian home, I did not start out with an understanding of the word discipline. I simply knew that I belonged to people who loved me and cared for me. That is dependence. They spoke to me and I answered. That is responsibility. They gave me things to do and I did them. That is obedience. It adds up to discipline. In other words, the totality of the believer's response is discipline. While there are instances where the two words discipline and obedience seem to be interchangeable, I am using the first as comprehending, the second and always presupposing both dependence and responsibility. We might say that discipline is the disciple's career. It defines the very shape of the disciple's life. Obedience, on the other hand, refers to a specific action. going to be talking to you about discipline no not disciple discipline by elizabeth elliott um so originally i believe this was um part of the reading between the lines book club however i think that it has closed but i still read it i still wanted to share my thoughts on it and so I will put information down below because several of us have participated in the past and we've talked about different books. So if you are interested in those, I'll just leave the playlist linked down below. Whew, it's been a day. Um, so this book is basically going to go through seven, I think it's been one, two, three, four, yeah, seven. It's going to go through seven different areas of in your life that you can use discipline with. And I didn't put that very well, but basically, um, as the opening of this video is, you go through the discipline of the body, mind, place, and honoring others, time, possessions, work, and feeling. And um, it's Elizabeth Elliot, so I trust her. She is very good at using um, scripture to found her beliefs rather than finding beliefs and then trying to find scripture to back it up. So uh, definitely some hard things in here, a lot of um, self-reflecting and um, uh, how does my father-in-law put it? He says it's the anti-self-esteem type of reading. So. It was phenomenal. I have never read this book before. I have read her Keep a Quiet Heart, Let Me Be a Woman, and uh, one of my favorite biographies, which is uh, the one that she wrote about Amy Carmichael. But um, this one is definitely a first time for me, and it was so good. The book was actually, this book review was actually supposed to go up last month. However, I was personally not ready. Um, it ended up being something that I just needed more time uh, to reflect and there was just a lot of things going on so I just needed more time. One of the things that I didn't like about this book is I wish she would have put footnotes or references a little better because she would quote something and there is a section in the back of footnotes but it is not, um, it's really difficult um, to find where she referenced certain things and that was that was disappointing to me uh mom interruption so in terms of a basic outline of this book i would say there's one quote in here that says christian discipline means placing oneself under orders and so because of that we go into you know the discipline of the mind how this is going to work with turning our thoughts to god um, the body, how we're going to use our body uh, for the glorification of the Lord, and many of those things. And so the book does talk a lot about that. Um, this is my notebook of notes, and it is pretty full. I mean, I just couldn't stop writing. I couldn't stop reading out loud to my husband. Um, there's a lot of this book was written in the 80s I believe I want to get that first copyright 1982 this book was written in the 80s and yet a lot of the wisdom found in there I think is so much more applicable today than it was during her time 
in, especially in this um, time that we have of being fulfilled to make ourselves feel better. And for Christians, she kind of points to the Bible and says, look, this is actually how it should be. Um, the opposite of that is kind of something that I grew up with in the church of seeing. And so, you know, I'm going to put this caveat here because, well, something I grew up and I've shunned it, but you can almost go in the uh, opposite direction. So growing up, a lot of things that I would see is a work in of itself being the most, um, favored thing of all. Um, basically our works cannot salvation gain, but in this case, work was so valued that the rundown person was actually more holy than anyone else. And that's something like I grew, I grew up seeing a lot of that. Um, especially within, I, growing up, we have a huge homeschool community. And so a lot of the older ideas were prevalent in my homeschool community. And again, it wasn't that work is not good. That's not what I'm trying to say. Or that um, self-denial is not good. Those are actually very good qualities. And um, But the heart behind them actually needs to be there. And she, you know, she addresses that going back to scripture as a source. And this is where I think because of our society today, it would have been nice to have a little bit more information on this, but there really is no need. It's just, I like defining points, especially when I see an issue. So like I was sharing the issue that we had, the, the, the opposite um, today is all, a lot of self-care to the point that I think we have gone overboard and self-care means constantly making sure that um, yourself is number one. And it's true self-care wouldn't be that. It's taking care of the body that God has given you so that you can turn around and use it to the purpose and glory of the Lord. Um, that is a good outlook, but we kind of go um, one extreme or the other. And so discipline kind of goes back into... Um, putting things in the proper perspective. There was a, a lot in here that, again, I just had to really, really contemplate on um, the notes in here. This is, this is one of those books that literally I finished reading and I had to turn around and I'm just going to start it over again, but I have to go at a slower pace um, because it's not a book to read and pass on. It's a, it's more like a manual to kind of retrain your thoughts into that direction. Um, so again, I, I really enjoyed this. I love anything by Elizabeth Elliot. She again is very on par with scripture and, um, just learning to live biblically and, um, Going to the root word of discipline, I think, was a huge key in here. So I'm just going to, the the contents of here are created, cared for, and called. Discipline, the answer to God's call. How do we know we are called? Under orders, grace, book spirit, and one thing more, a sovereign God and man's choice. And then all these disciplines, each chapter has its own um, body, mind, etc. And then chapter 14, exchange my life for his. And, um... It would be a, a very good, um, I think it would be a really good book to do, especially if you're looking for things to do with your older teens, kind of working through it and putting things in a good perspective. So again, I hope um, you liked this review. Go ahead and leave me a thumbs up if you did. I'm going to try to get more reviews um, of the nonfiction books that I like up. Um, they're a little bit more difficult for me. I know I've said this before, so I, I will try not to be redundant, but they are a little bit more difficult for me because I need time to think, to ponder, to contemplate, and I always feel like I'm on a fine line between preaching, which I don't like to do. I'm not a preacher. <laughs> and um, sharing. So, um there's always that when I'm making these videos and I go and I edit them and I'm like, I might have crossed a line that I should not 
be crossing. So the, that's another um, big struggle for me in that. So anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. So until next time, have another cup of coffee and read another chapter. Bye.